Good morning and welcome to this second chapel in our very unique new chapel context. Uh, it is a beautiful spring morning. The birds are singing. Um, it is a bit overcast, but it's lovely. Uh, I was reminded after Monday's chapel of the sweetness of our community, even when we're not together. The emails and the texts that you sent were a great encouragement to our whole team. So thank you. Uh, this morning, Stephanie Formenti, our Chapel Associate for Discipleship, is going to be continuing what we have decided to call the For Such a Time as This series. Uh, Stephanie is going to be opening Psalm 46 as encouragement to us from God's Word. Uh, I would also like to invite you to join Friday morning as Courtney Doctor will be talking to us about Kingdom Vision from the Book of Colossians. Uh, and now Cooper Twitt is going to lead us in musical worship. I pray that God is being gracious to you and that this next half hour or so will be a great blessing to you and to our community. i 
want you to know that I miss you all. Uh, I am sitting here in my home recording this and uh, I just miss seeing you all on campus and being together in chapel. Uh, please know that I have been praying for you and you all have been in my in my thoughts and prayers as classes have started and you're trying to get back into a new routine. Um, I know that that is that can be a challenge. Um, I am home. My husband is home. My kids are home. So we are in a similar boat. We are trying to figure out what it means to be faithful right now and um, how to be faithful in the work that God has put in front of us given these times. Um, I know a lot of you are, are feeling a sense of loss and grief right now, especially you seniors, as uh, you know, this year is not ending the way that you thought it would. And you don't get to say your proper goodbyes and you're missing out on some of the ceremony and, and tradition around the end of the year. Um, I know some of you also feel very anxious and worried about the circumstances going on, um, especially as maybe some of you know people who are more vulnerable to, to the, the virus, um, praying for you. And, and others of you might actually be pretty content right now, and, and that's okay. I know that for me, I have oscillated between all of these emotions um, on any given day, and it's just these are very strange and unprecedented times, um, but we are we're in this together, and uh, I'm praying for you. I've been meditating the last two weeks on Psalm 46. Um, it's a passage that God brought to my mind almost immediately when I got the news that students would not be returning to campus, uh, when things suddenly felt really big and unstable, and when I when I realized that our reality was changing pretty significantly, um, this has just been the psalm that the Lord has continued to bring to mind, and it's sort of become my theme daily. Like all the psalms, Psalm 46 is was written and is intended to shape the affections of the original hearers, right? The people of God, to reorient their loves to what is true. The psalms act as identity shapers and sort of remembrance guides. They remind the people of God who they are and who God is. They are chants and cadences that give perspective and meaning to the daily existence of living as God's people. Um, and they act the same way for us. So if you have your Bibles, turn to Psalm 46 or feel free to just listen as I read. Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth gives way, though the mountains be moved into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, and though the mountains tremble at its swelling. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God will help her when morning dawns. The nations rage, the kingdoms totter. He utters his voice, the earth melts. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come, behold the works of the Lord, how he has brought desolations on the earth. He makes wars cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the chariots with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. This is a pretty familiar psalm, and it's perhaps one that you've memorized. Um, it is a comforting place to go when our world feels like it's been turned upside down almost overnight. 
This psalm talks about the earth giving away and about mountains being hurled into the sea. It talks about kingdoms being tottered and chariots being burned. Um, those images would all bring to mind for the original hearers these, these places of security, things that God's people would consider pretty immovable and powerful. But the context for the psalm is a time when all of those things, all of those places were in disarray. Our context is much the same, and I believe that has revealed to us sort of our idols of our heart and of our culture, um, places and establishments we have turned to to give us comfort or to provide us with security. Think about it. The economy is now unstable at best. The government, both nationally and internationally, are they're scrambling for answers and solutions. Um, even entertainment, movie theaters are closed, Broadway is closed, Disney World is closed. Think about education. Um, all of a sudden, whether you go to Harvard or whether you go to community college, it's online learning. And sports, NBA is canceled, and March Madness, even the Olympics have been postponed. Uh, our individualism and our self-sufficiency, suddenly those things are called into question as we are restrained and restricted to the confines of our home. Um, we are not as strong as we think we are. Psalm 46 is a convicting and challenging psalm for these days. But I've been specifically reflecting on verse 10. Actually, just two words in verse 10. Be still. Due to the coronavirus, my kids are home um, for an indefinite period of time, and so we are doing our best to continue their education. Thankfully, they are in third, first, and kindergarten, and so I feel pretty okay with, with managing that. Um, but every day in the middle of our day, at some point, I find myself sort of on repeats, right? Uh, it never fails. I, guys, please sit down. Hey, guys, sit still and finish your math, and then you can play. Um, please sit still and listen. And I realize that often I equate this exhortation in Psalm 4610 to be still. I equate that as meaning almost the same thing as sit still. But sit still is very different than be still. My instructions to my kids are for them to sit still, to stop moving physically in order to focus on the task at hand. This verse is getting at something much more comprehensive. The verb here, be still, is like y'all, be still, all of you, be still, it's in the plural, and it's written in the first person. So it is accurate to picture God as addressing a group here, and I would say specifically the nations. Um, the context helps us to see this. If you look at the rest of verse 10, it says God is going to exalt his name among all the nations and across the, earth, the whole earth. His command then to the nations is to be still, to stop contending with him. He alone is the one true God. He alone has dominion over all the earth. He is the only one really in charge, and the nations need to stop pretending that they are. They should be, in, instead, they should be quiet and recognize the rightful king. But we know that the Psalms are also written for the people of God, for God's people. The beginning and the end of this psalm, uh, they invite us into this reading. They're, they're sort of bookends, if you will. Look at verse one, God is our refuge. In verse 11, the God of Jacob is our fortress. Verse seven references how God is with us. So it is not incorrect to apply verse 10 to us as God's people, which then begs the question, what does it mean to be still? Over the past two weeks, it has been so strange to watch daily life come to a grinding halt in many ways. Suddenly, our calendars are clear. Every night, when we think about the next day's schedule, we realize it looks pretty much the same as today's, right? We don't really have anywhere to go. We don't have any people to see, no errands to run. I don't have a job I need to get to physically. I don't need to take my kids to school. Um, I am home. My husband is home. My kids are home. Life as we know it has suddenly become very still, very limited as to our physical scope. I see this in my neighborhood too. Far, far fewer cars are driving around. Um, neighbors are at home. People are sitting on their front porches. People are walking around the neighborhood at a safe distance. Um, family dinners are back in style. A lot, of a, a lot of yard work 
is being done, right? Uh, things have slowed way down. And honestly, I have been really thankful for the slower pace and the more intentional um, and focused family time I needed to change my pace. But I will also admit that slowing down has been more like sitting still than being still for me. Uh, even while my schedule has been less rushed, my mind and my heart are all over the place. It's been hard to sleep. It's been hard to focus. It's been hard to wrangle my thoughts in productive ways. Um, and I would, I would imagine I'm not alone in this. So verse 10 is challenging. It's challenging us to be still, to cease striving, to stop in a comprehensive whole person, mind, heart, body kind of way. Maybe like me, you're a fixer. And so when situations like worldwide pandemics take place uh, in an effort to maintain some sort of sanity, you spring into action, right? So coming up with to-do lists and routines that are stuck on the refrigerator. Uh, maybe you have new goals or new reading lists or a new workout routine. We're striving, right? There's striving there. Um, or maybe when things get overwhelming, you, you binge watch Netflix or you play lots of video games or you bake or you cook or you, you're constantly scrolling on your phone or constantly tex texting with friends. Um, even that is striving, right? We all do it. When we suddenly feel out of control, we work really hard to regain it. We strive, we work, we fret. This psalm is calling us to something different. It is reminding us to step aside, to stop working so hard to be in control, to quit trying to fix things, to be still. In Mark 4, Jesus gets into a boat with his disciples and they set off to go across the, to the other side. And suddenly a storm sweeps in and waves start to fill the boat. All of this, uh, and then Jesus, right, he's sleeping in the stern in the back of the boat. And uh, the disciples wake Jesus up because they are very much afraid for their lives. The boat is starting to sink and the wind is blowing and it shows no signs of letting up. They are out of control and they think they are going to die. Mark tells us in his characteristically direct way in verse 39 of chapter 4 that Jesus awoke and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. Be still. The disciples are struck with awe and even fear when they see this happen because suddenly they realize who is in the boat with them, the one who has authority even over the winds and the seas. This brings us back to the second part of Psalm 46, verse 10. We are to be still, and then we are to know. Know what? Know that God is God. And this is the secret, I think, to being still. The only way we can actually calm down, cease striving and relinquish, relinquish control is when we remember who God is. And Psalm 46 tells us, the Psalm tells us who God is. So number one, God is our refuge. A refuge is a shelter from distress or danger, a place to find sure safety and protection. God is our refuge. And he is not a flimsy shack or a tent that is easily tossed uh, to and fro by the wind. He is also our strength. Verse 7 says that he is our fortress, and this is repeated in verse 11. Fortress is military language. It, it is a large building or a group of buildings used as a military stronghold. It is not easily conquered or knocked down, and it protects those that seek shelter in it. A fortress keeps enemies out and provides for the well-being of the people within we can be still because God is our strong fortress and our refuge. God is our help. The psalmist says that he is our very present help in trouble. God is not far away, my friends. He is near to those who call to him. This whole situation has not taken him by surprise. He is not scrambling to figure out answers and solutions. He is very present when we are in trouble. Therefore, we don't have to be afraid. We need not fear. 
Look at the list in the, the psalmist mentions in the following verses. Though the earth gives way, though the mountains be moved into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble at its swelling, though pandemics sweep across the world, we do not need to fear. Why? Because we have a very present help, a strong fortress in times of trouble. He is near. God is near. And he cares for us. He loves us. Third, God is with us. Verses 4 and 5 describe a city, a place where God dwells, um, the city of Zion. And it describes it this way. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God will help her when morning dawns. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God will help her. Isn't this beautiful language? It's a beautiful picture. It, it reminds me a lot of Revelation 21, the picture of the new heavens and the new earth. Um, and, and really, guys, if we're part of God's family, if we have trusted in Jesus, then we are citizens of this amazing city, of the city of Zion, the place where God dwells, is our home. When we remember this city, the place where the Most High dwells with us, we get some perspective. Um, our discomfort with what's going on here, our, our face-to-face encounter with our own finitude and the brokenness of this world, our loneliness and our fear and our suffering and our disappointment, um, those tears because we don't know what to do to fix it, all of these things are actually right feelings because this is not our home. The isolation and the worry and the pandemic, it is not the way it's supposed to be but it's also not the way it's going to be forever. We have a beautiful city waiting for us where the most high God dwells. And when the morning dawns, this place is going to be made brand spanking new. (laughs) And all of the sad things will become undone. And the rightful King, King Jesus, will put his foot on the head of the serpent once and for all. This is the God who invites us to be still. We are listening to a children's song in our home a lot right now. It's called Come to Me by Santa McCracken. I would encourage you to Google it on YouTube or find it um, because it's really beautiful. And the lyrics are simple, but really true. It goes like this. Are you tired? Are you weary? Worn out from the day? Have you been in a hurry? I will slow your pace. Come to me. Walk with me. Learn the rhythms of my grace. Come to me. I have all you need. Learn to rest even while you are awake. Friends, our loving Father is calling us into stillness, not boredom. He is inviting us into rest, not worry. He is bringing us to a place where all the normal noises of busyness are giving way to his voice. He is beckoning us to be still and to know that he alone is God. He's got this. Let's press into him. Will you pray with me? Father God, thank you that you are our strong fortress, our mighty refuge, our ever-present help in trouble. Lord, still our hearts, help us to listen to you, help us to trust you, and help us to be faithful as we follow you. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Still we plead for thy throne.
self-made 